everybody. This is Andy Lopez, Invisible Gardener, and you're listening to or watching Don't Panic, It's Organic. Today, uh, we start the second workshop, and it's called It's the Trees. So I'm going to be talking to you all about trees. We have it broken down into uh, three workshops, and I'll tell you all about what they are. Um, uh, coming up in a little bit, I'll tell you what's going to be on uh, this month. It's called It's the Trees Workshop. And remember, you need the uh, the book, Don't Panic, It's Organic, to be able to follow through with the workshop. The book is 20 bucks from Amazon. Uh, and you also need membership. Membership is free. You go to my website, invisiblegardener.com. The phone lines will be opening up halfway through the show, around, around a half hour, and the call numbers. There's, what I prefer you do to do is to use a Zoom meeting. You just click, go to either my website or to the bbsradio.com um, website or my radio show and click on the Sue meeting. Easiest way to find us, you go to my uh, website, click on radio show, click on live, takes you there, click on the Sue meeting. You can also call 888-627-6008 or 323-744-4831 if you wish to talk that way. You're shy, you know. But you know, when we do Zoom, your your video, your pictures, so forth, does not show up here. We don't show that. We just hear your voice. But you get to see the graphics and everything, too, which is really cool. So try to use the Zoom if you can, okay? So I'll be starting the show in a few seconds. Uh, and um, <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm ex always excited about doing these shows. Um, I've been doing a show called It's the Trees for many, many years, telling people about the importance of trees. And uh, so that's what the show is going to be about today. I'm going to cover um, uh, 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 what the trees do in nature. I'm also going to cover a little bit of, I'm not going to get off the subject too, not, too much, but I'm also going to cover um, uh, the, uh, the current uh, climate change that's going on, the current global warming, how it's affecting the trees, what we've been doing to damaging the trees. Uh, so I'll be covering that in, uh, right off the bat here. Uh, we'll talk about the... Uh, Ice Age, uh, from global warming. I'm going to cover a wide variety of subjects, cover uh, the Gulf Stream, um, and then we'll go on to the, the next stage, which is white fertilizing with chemicals. I have an article I wrote on how to kill a tree, and then some rules for organic tree care. That's, that's what I'll be covering on today's show. So hang in there, and uh, we'll, we'll start in a second. On uh, next week's show... We're going to be talking about um, how to raise the energy level of your trees. And the majority of the show will be covering how to use a refractometer to measure the bricks levels of your trees. That will be on the November 21st. And then on uh, November 28th, we're going to cover how to control palm wilt naturally. We're going to cover how organic control for Pythagoras, Polythagoras, shot hole borer. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, organic control of oak root fungus, and then we'll cover silk tree, glassy wing sharpshooters. Uh, and then I will uh, go over as much as I can with, o with those things uh, and ex explain to you uh, how it works. And it's the same thing for all trees and all diseases. So uh, I'll be starting up in a second as to um, the, the workshop. Just want to talk a little bit about. Uh, Trees are Mother Nature's lungs, and I also call it uh, the natural. It's Mother Nature's shock absorber. And uh, I, uh, I wanted to go. I want to go over this global, current global warming that we're having right now, and and uh, try to explain to you a bit about what's going on. So you already know pretty much that we're you know we're we're being affected by the CO two in the air. That the Earth is getting warmer and warmer. Uh, the Earth, the oceans uh, are, absor uh, are absorbing the warmth, and this is warm ocean that is melting the clusters of glaciers in the Antarctic, as well as glaciers around the world, as evidenced by the sh ships being able to almost go through the North Pole without running into ice. Scientists are now saying that the a Amundsen Sea region of the West Antarctic ice sheet is being undermined by warm water that is melting away at the base and making more and more of it float with no base. A research group has recently showed that glaciers in the Edmund Sea 
sector have shrunk, shrunk so much that a large portion of the glaciers now float where they once rested on land. The glacier flows out from the land over the ocean with its front edges afloat. Ice loss is driven by warm water that weakens the ice from below. As the warm water enters from below, the grounding line is moved further inland. It is this action that will eventually collapse the glacier. This collapse will cause the ocean to raise 15 feet within a short period of time. This race will prove to be disastrous, disastrous to anyone living by the ocean and will especially impact Florida, PCH, and California, as well as around the world. Scientists are saying this could happen anywhere from 50 years to 100 years from now. Actually, that was, that's being very generous. So what about the trees? So way back in 2000, I started talking about climate change, what was really going to happen, and how it was important that we plant more trees. You know why. Trees take in CO2 and place it with O2, right? They give off oxygen. They take carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. They also control how much water is present in the air as well as cleaning up their local environment. Looking into recent past, past it does not take one long to find that last global warming called the medieval warming period, which lasted around 500 years when they cut down most of the forest in Europe, and which was followed by what is called the Little Ice Age, which also lasted around 500 years. George Washington crossed the cross Delaware, where he, where he also saw chunks of ice flowing, floating by. All throughout the history of the world, there have been global warming, followed by periods of ice, which we call Ice Age. We are now starting into a new period of global warming, which will be followed by a period of global cooling, leading to another Ice Age. We all must understand the role the forest plays in the balancing act and by, remove, and by removing the natural shock absorber, we have removed the one thing that can mediate the fluctuations of heat and cold. While we, while we must behave as good gardeners and reduce our carbon print, eliminate the use of toxic chemicals, stop radiating the world through the use of nuclear power plants, no they're not clean source of energy, as well as clean up our acts such as forcing us to eat GMO foods with pesticides and now fungicides to Removing plastic from the ocean, there's just a few, these are just a few. We must also stop the destruction of what forests we have left in the world and start to plant more trees everywhere. We should have at least 50% forest cover on all city. 80% would be best. Even if we were to plant today, it would still take close to 50 years before these trees would start to affect the world's climate. If we have started in 2000, the trees would only be 15 years old and they still be, have a way to go. But it's not too late. We must start now to give the next seven generations of all living things a chance on earth. We are destroying the topsoil, it's like destroying the skin. Do that and we won't last long. It's the same for the earth. So <laughs> here's a nuclear ice age. In my recent blog, How to Kill All Living Things on Earth Within 100 Years, it's in the book, I point to many things we are doing to ourselves and how to our planet, how one problem alone is a problem we can deal with, but not all combined. These are all natural ecological barriers which should not be crossing and have already. I have counted 10 so far that are together which surely I mean the end of all living things on the planet within a short period of time. Yes, we have gone through global warming and ice ages before, but what is the difference this time around? Radiation. Nothing, al nothing alive will live in a radiated environment for long. A nuclear winter will be even worse. Throw into, into the mix polluted water, polluted air, and polluted oceans, you have a wonderful recipe for extinction. So how do we get an ice age from, a globe, from global warming? The process is quite simple. The Gulf Stream is a major controller of weather patterns. It allows there to be seasonal fluctuations that create spring, summer, and fall and winter. How does it do that? The position of the sun through space, sun, through space determines how much light the Earth will get from the sun as well as how hot it would be. The further away the earth is from the sun, the colder it gets and the less heat it gets. It is this heat that is absorbed by the oceans of the earth. The Gulf Stream is the circulation of the earth's oceans which literally go around the earth. Cool water is denser than warm water and will sink. The warm water would sink below the warm water. Water that is more sal saline, salty, is also denser than water with lower salinity and thus will sink below the water of the, of the lower salinity. Water temperature has more of an effect on water movement than salinity, and good global warming will increase the temperature. It is a fact that while warm water salt, that warm salty water rises, cold salty water sinks. 
it applies only to salt water, not fresh water. The glaciers will melt the warmer it gets and it will mix fresh water with the salty water and since fresh water does not sink nor rise except when mixed with salt water it would dilute the salt and the effect of the circulation would eventually stop altogether. This makes the ocean a natural recycler of heat. As salt water gets colder it sinks, as it gets warmer it rises, starting the cycle over again. As it gets colder and as it goes down and then rises to the surface as it gets warmer. If the Gulf Stream stops, it will stop a natural cycle and stay on a cold cycle until the Earth's salt levels have increased to where the sun's rays were heated up enough to recirculate and the natural cycles will start again. This may take a few hundred years or a few thousand years. Remember the last time this happened, the CO2 levels were, no, CO2 levels were nowhere near what they are now. Uh, so where they are now, and, the, and, that's, and that cycle lasted 500 years for global warming and the ice age has followed. That was just cutting down the earth's forest. Imagine what would happen now. So the trees are an important part of, eco of nature, the planet's ecosystem that allows humans to breathe and all living things to breathe, are essential to the earth's recycling system. They provide the very air we need to control the water, climate cycles of the planet. This provides home to many species that have been called the Earth's shock absorbers. I think of them as the Earth's lungs. They simulate oxygen, carbon into oxygen. They clean up the air, improve air quality, and bring water and minerals up to surface and reduce water runoff. Urban forestry helps clean up cities and raise the quality of life, promoting interaction between urban dwellers and their environment. Trees also reduce health, heat, and glare. Remember, I have a lot more information in the book, in my book, Don't Panic, It's Organic, Under Tree Care. And it covers a lot more than I can really cover here. But I wrote an article called How to Kill the Trees. And these are some things that, that will kill the trees. I.e., if you want your tree to live, don't do these things. First, fertilize with a chemical fertilizer. It's very bad. Second, overwater your trees. If you do water the trunk of the tree really well, forget about slow drip watering. That's also bad. Never use filtered or well water. Who cares about the chemicals in it, right? Never allow the trees to recover. If it doesn't recover overnight, forget it. Don't use fertilizer with any compost rich in trace metals and bacteria or rock dust. Pests deserve to eat trees. Cut down all your trees. Plant anything you want. Forget about the trees that will grow in your area. Don't protect trees from dogs. Protect, forget the soil. Trees don't need soil, do they? Never mulch. If you, if you do over mulch it. Why protect trees from people? <laughs> uh, poison the soil, spilling gasoline, paint exactly salt on it. Use only tight wire supports, as this, this will strangle the tree as it grows. That was my How to Kill a Tree article, which I wrote uh, a long time ago. And these are things you're not supposed to do, which people seem to be doing quite regularly often to these trees. And it's important that we understand that trees are essential to us, to, our, uh, to all life on Earth. Just like everything's interblended together, interacted, interconnected. And if you damage one part, you damage the other part. And the trees, you know, a long time ago used to cover the Earth, except for places where, you know, in the ocean and the, uh, and the various levels on the mountaintop. But generally, it was a forest covering the Earth. And it, 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 it regulated so many things. And uh, we have been doing exactly the wrong thing over the over these years. We have been uh, cutting down trees more and more. Right now, there's a thousand acres a day being cut down in the Amazon. And to me, the solution is really simple. It's all about money, right? It's all about money. That they're, they're doing it to make money. If we can pay farmers not to grow corn or grow whatever wheat, you know, whatever products we don't want them to grow, just pay them, you know. We can pay these people not to cut down their trees. Seriously, right? They, they can make money by not cutting down their trees and planting more trees. And that was, will go a long way to helping solve the problem. Uh, it, was, it would stop the, 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 the loss of trees, right, immediately, uh, because we want to keep these old growth forests there. Uh, trees have a right to live too, so it's important that we keep them, right? And so the trees are uh, are something that we want to uh, 
talk about and, and and pay attention to, you know, because it's not going to it's not going to work if we ignore the trees. When I started my uh, business in uh, 1970, I would get a lot of calls for people who had ant problems, right? They would say, Eddie, come over, I really have a really bad ant problem. They're all over inside the house. So I would go, and it didn't take me too long to realize that what the ants were doing. They were actually going up, attacking a tree. It was a tree, usually it's around somewhere near the house, you know. And the ants were climbing up the tree, doing their thing, and a lot of them were coming down onto the house. So I told the lady, you know, you don't really have an ant problem, you have a tree problem. And then in my practice of learning how to heal the trees, right, I came to the, you know, I realized a long time ago, almost right away, that it's really a soil problem. I was like very fortunate to key into the soil problem right away, rather than say, well, this tree's got a problem, let's see what I can spray it to kill it, to kill the problem, right, let's see what I can feed it with fertilizer to give it to solve the problem. So my approach was to say, well, okay, well, here are two trees. For example, this one went to one place, there were two trees there, one next to each on the other side of the house. One tree was literally have ants, trails of ants climbing up that tree. The other tree was the same kind of variety tree. The other tree, not a single ant was running around it. So I would go, what's with this tree and what's with that tree? So uh, I, I tried to figure out what the difference was. And so it, and it wasn't, it, you know, it's like, that's even a little more confusing to me because I was called, well, the soil is the same, right? The soil should be the same on this side of the house and on that side of the house. But oddly enough, it isn't. Um, I do, a, uh, one of my services I do is uh, soil testing, right? I can take a sample of your soil and see what it's like. Well, a lot of times when I do soil testing, I have to do about four or five different samples on the property. And each one of them will be radically very different from the other one, uh, including the pH level might be different. Uh, the nutritional level might be different. You know, what minerals it has in it might be different than what microbials it has in it might be different. And it has a lot to do with the way, you know, when people build stuff and how the, the, the property is and where they dump soil in one section or they dump something else in another section, gravel or uh, construction sand, right? And so that makes a difference also. So throughout the years, I've slowly been figuring things out, you know, as to what the difference is one tree and the other tree is. To me, the obvious was first off the bat, the one tree was getting over water. There was, that was the side that had the, uh, the bib on for the water. People would go to get water, wash their hands, whatever. The tree was constantly getting wet. And also, too, it was getting wet from the lawn. It had a lawn on that side. The tree on the other side, I don't see how it got any water at all, right? It, didn't, it wasn't getting water by any sprinkler systems or drip line or anything. It was just sitting there all by itself, having a wonderful time. But obviously, it was getting enough water from somewhere. That was a big difference right off the bat. I, at that time, I wasn't doing uh, lab testing. Otherwise, I would have found out that the pH level is wrong, the nutritional level is wrong, right? Uh, the microbial level will all be all wrong, too, between the two. be very different. And that, I could do that now. So I usually test a certain section of the property, another section, and say, well, this is doing really well. It's like, for example, the uh, area you have a, a, a raised bed, a garden. Hopefully, the garden is in better condition than the soil that you're growing around your house, right? So, uh, so in the process of learning this, I, I, and I said, well, how does the soil, right? How does the soil get things to the plant? What is it? How, uh, does the plant go out, the roots go down there, and the roots, do the roots do something to, you know, they run into a new source of nutrition, like minerals or whatever. Does the root somehow wrap itself around it or break it down? Or, or is it something to do with something else is going on, right? And is it the microbes? That are doing. What do the microbes do down there, right? I said to myself. Well, I realized a long time ago that that's exactly what happened. The mycelium is a is a is a web. It's in the soil, and that mycelium, basically, what it does is it converts, it conveys minerals from one place to another, to, from the soil into the trees. And it's a very interesting process the way it does that, right? 
And it turns out that, you know, there's different type of microorganisms and mycelium around the world. So when trees are from certain places, they, were, they evolved with certain types of mycorrhiza in the root system as opposed to trees in another part of the world with different types of mycorrhiza. And that's something, too, that's very interesting in homeowners' properties. It's because you'll find plants from all over the world. So what I learned to do a long time ago, that's one reason why I started making compost, because uh, I started to uh, collect different types of animal manures, because realizing when I studied the biodynamic system, Will Steiner system, basically I learned that um, different animals absorb different, have different microbials in their stomach, which provide different types of nutrients to, back to the soil, different types of microbes back to the soil, right? Just think of the bisons running up and down the United States, right? And in the good old days, we had animals everywhere. So each animal has their own type of microbial life in their stomach because they re return to the soil and the, and the source of manure where they die and their body breaks down. So I, I started collecting uh, different types of animal manure. I had uh, llama manure, uh, sheep, uh, goat, I had a uh, horse, uh, cow, steer, at one time even had elephant manure. I do, I do not get any kind of uh, carnivorous animal manure. That's another story. You don't want to be doing that in your compost. Uh, I had rabbit, chicken. <laughs> I think I may be forgetting a few in there, but it was a wide blend of uh, animals that I put into my compost. And then I also decided to get the minerals, put the two together into the compost, but that's the reason why you make compost is to get the minerals and the microbes together so that they have a little party and the microbes break down the minerals and then when your compost uh, is in a form, so when you put it in the soil, uh, the minerals are in a, and the microbes are there to encourage not only the soil to go back to life, but also to provide the nutrients that the plants need. So throughout the years, I have developed very interesting ways to re-micro, not recolonize the soil. Because I've learned from experience, every time I go to a, a place that has a tree problem, for example, and it's one of the things we're going to be talking about later on in the show here, we're going to be covering about, you know, some of the basic uh, this, uh, pests that attack trees and what, what you can do to help them. And of course, it goes right back down to the health of the soil, right? goes right back down to the health of the soil, what you can do to help for the, to help the uh, the trees recover, right? So next week, we're going to be talking about the refractometer and how I learned to use a refractometer on trees. Not so many people use refractometers on trees. The or whatever. And the following week, we're going to be talking about uh, some specific diseases and some specific pests, uh, like Tom Wilt, uh, Sagaris Chantal Bohr, uh, oak root fungus and the glassy wing sharpshooter. This is just a few. If you have some type of pest on your on your tree and you want me to talk about it, this would be a good time to email me, Andy Lopez at invisiblegardener.com and the subject you write uh, radio show three workshops, make sure I get it, and then and then in the body to tell me what the problem is. Hopefully include a picture. I like to I like to show visuals as well. And I'll talk to you about specifically about that tree right so uh, i've learned that interestingly enough the, the whole thing it's really very simple when you think about it because you know when i started using a refractometer i realized that what does a refractometer do it tell, helps me to understand the mineral levels of the tree even though a refractometer is a measurement of sugar it's the sugar that transports the, the minerals up the tree so it's, so it's, and it it's also has to do with uh, carbohydrates. And I talk a lot about the difference between complex carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates. And these are keys to, once you key into that, you'll find that, that it's, it's so much easier to be preventative than, than, uh, than to go after the fact, right? And it's so much easier to prevent a problem than to uh, deal with it afterwards, right? And so I teach the law of cause and effect. And the process of learning the law of cause and effect, it always comes back down to the soil. Now, the soil is not the effect. The soil is another cause. The cause are humans who are destroying the soil. That's the cause. So in studying the law of cause and effect, you're going to find this whole chain of effect. 
But you really want to go back to the beginning, to the cause, right? And when we talk about climate change, and we talk about the, what's going on to the Earth right now, there are many effects. Our CO2, plastic, toxins, radiation, right? Oxygen, air pollution, water pollution, those are effects. It's always a chain of effect. What happens to one affects the other. They're not the cause. The cause is us. Us human beings are the cause. What we do affects everything else. So, you know, in terms of dealing with law, cause, and effect, you kind of have to say, well, don't shouldn't we deal with us humans? And that's what the process, that's probably what I'm doing here. That's, part, that's what the Kiss the Ground folks do. That's what a lot of other folks do. They try to educate you, make you aware that you, us, we all are the cause, right? And how we live our lives and how we uh, deal with everyday, uh, you know, occurrences makes a difference. What we eat makes a difference. What we buy makes a difference, right? What we, how we vote makes a difference. And so it's, it, it goes, so, that, so in my process, well, so I learned a long time ago, my first book was called How to Heal the Earth in Your Spare Time. Basically, I wanted to tell people, you don't need to change, radically change your life. Just make some basic changes. It'll, personally, I would love to stop driving a car unless that car is, uh, it, it, it's ecologically sound, maybe electric, even electric it has a source of pollution at the beginning when it generates electricity, unless of course you have a solar powered car, right? So I'm sure there are lots of ways we can do uh, do the, uh, the the car transport ways without polluting. Same thing with doing business without polluting. Same thing without doing farming without polluting. See, all these things contribute to the problem, right? And so I learned a long time ago about healing the earth, and that if you heal the earth, you heal yourself. And at that time, I wasn't calling it heal the soil, because to me, the soil and the earth is the same thing, even though we, I also want to talk about healing the water, oceans, right? Healing the, the air, healing the atmosphere, healing our ecosystem. See, so I, I, I group them all together, not just one thing, like just heal the soil. You be, it's very hard for you to heal the soil if the environment the soil is in is toxic, if it's full of pesticides, if it's full of... Uh, plastics, if it's full of radiation, the soil is not going to be too happy, is it? So you have to do, so people, for, exa for example, people call me up and say, Andy, I want you to come and spray this tree. All I want to know is how much it will cost just to do that one tree. Ignore everything else. Just do that one tree. So it's kind of like that, in the sense that I, I would tell them, well, it's like you want me to do your finger, but ignore your body. So if you want me to heal your finger, right, to help a finger, i got to deal with the body. You don't want me to deal with the body, then there's a way to get rid to do with the fingers. Just cut it off. Eventually you have to cut all the fingers off, then your hand and your arm and so forth, because you ain't going to heal it. See, right? So it's the same thing what's going on here. If you want to heal the soil, we also have to clean up the water, right, clean up the, our, our water that we drink, clean up the ocean, clean up the, the atmosphere, right, change our method of doing business, because we shouldn't be polluting while we're making money, right? Change our method of agriculture. We shouldn't be destroying the soil while we're growing, right? While, we, while we, we're growing. The food we're eating is totally ridiculous. There's, there's nothing in the food that'll keep you healthy. What you get put in is what you get out. It's the same thing with the water. We're polluting the water. So we all these things have to be done together. You can't just heal the soil and ignore everything else. You know what I mean? You can't just do that. Even unless you have like a bubble, you lived in a bubble, and that was your soil, and it was separated from everything else. Uh, but that doesn't work well either, does it? So coming up, uh, so in about in a few minutes, uh, I'm going to be opening the phone lines up again, right? And letting you know uh, that you can talk to me. That's what it's for. I'm happy to hear what you have to say about, about the workshop, about uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, and if you have any specific uh, tree problems, I'm happy to help you deal with it now, right? Or or even you can just email me, as I say, Andy Lopez at InvisibleGardener.com, and I'll be more than happy to uh, talk about it here on the air for you, right? So I'm going to open up the, uh, so this is, so this is the, the end of the first part 
of uh, is natural tree care. Uh, next week we're going to be doing. Um, let's see what are we doing next week. We're doing um, how to raise the energy level of your tree and using the refractometer to measure bricks of your trees. That's going to cover the whole show. Uh, okay, so um, we're we're going to open up the lines now to, to accept calls. Let me go down. So the best way to connect with the show is to use the Zoom. And um, Zoom is free, you know, you just it'll download your computer or your phone. <clears throat> you go to my website, visiblegardener.com, click on radio show, it'll say live, click on it, takes you to the station, and then click on the Zoom, Zoom meeting button there, right on the front page there, see? Or you can just go straight directly to dbsradio.com forward slash don't panic, it's organic, you get to the same page. Click on Zoom, and we can talk. You won't, you, you, I'll be able to see your video, but you won't, nobody else will, okay? So it's just be the, the show. That way nobody knows, you know, you, if you're shy or whatever. But you can also just call. That's 888-627-6008. Or you can call the number directly, 323-744-4831. Well, that was the uh, first part of the show. Uh, I think uh, Deborah's here. Hey, Deborah, you there? Say something. I, I certainly am. How are you, Andy? Oh, I'm tired. I've had a Aww. wonderful long day yesterday and long night, too. <laughs> it's I'm sorry. Yeah, last, I, know, I know what you're talking about. The last six weeks has been fun, you know, because I had to do one eye, recover from that one, just in time to do the next eye, and I haven't really recovered from both of them yet <laughs> and right. the problem is that having you know it says you know which do you want to do you want to drive be able to see to drive or see to read i said see to drive but but basically that means you don't see to read to read right you gotta have glasses to read uh and it's like anything within arm's reach it's really it's all blurry i've been walking into walls and i get and i got these glasses which are meant for readings but you know you have to sit and look at the words not for walking around <laughs> no you you will bump into things if you use those glasses to walk around with yeah exactly right i already got a couple of concussions and you know oh, this, gosh. bounce off the wall i've been breaking things and tripping over Aww. things because it also works because i can't see my feet you know i can't see down there <laughs> so i know I, it's, but, it's difficult but i can drive really well <laughs> <laughs> well that's good because you don't want to be injuring yourself or anybody else on the road and hey, hey, you see the graphics i can it's beautiful are they nice Except the earth is heating up and that's you know what i like about the show i love trees Andy, oh, and yeah. you know, i know, know you do and you take such a holistic approach in viewing all of this and i love that about you that's important, too, because, you know, yeah. I, I work a lot with kiss the ground, you know, and I've been telling them, well, maybe we should also kiss the earth, kiss the water, kiss the air, kiss the, air, <laughs> kiss the ocean, because it's all interconnected. You can't, you know, you, you can't have healthy soil if your water is toxic, if your air is toxic, right? You yes. can't have healthy trees if everything is toxic. It's like, seriously. And, and that's the approach I've always taken. That's why it's so... That's why I like to name Invisible Gardener because it's really uh, the it's a the Earth has a holistic approach. You don't see, you know, the parable of the Invisible Gardener. No. Well, it's it's called. Well, well, I probably do, but our maybe the audience. <laughs> it's called the parable of the Invisible Gardener. When I got first got my name Invisible Gardener, ladies at the Invisible Gardener must have been here. Oh, that's hey Tippy, that's Tippy, right? That's Tippy. <laughs> I heard him. Yeah, he's he's he said, Andy, how are you doing? I heard him back there. That was so cool. He's your, he's your biggest book advocate. Oh yeah, he is. People say that can a dog read? Really? I go, oh, yeah, he's up to <laughs> chapter 14. You know, he likes to fix it. Pause up. <laughs> but yep. when I when I try to get that, when I went to get the trademark for Invisible Gardener, and the guy says, Well, that's gonna be a tough one because uh, you, you ever hear the parable of the invisible gardener? I says no. So he told me about the parable. It's been around a long, long time. Essentially, it's two people walk into a forest, and they both say, well, "Gee, what a beautiful forest! I wonder who's taking care of this place, right? Oh, there must be a gardener. Why don't we just hang out and see who it is, right?" So they hung out for days and days. Nobody came around. They put up traps. They put up things that were horned to, that reveal somebody's walking around. I said, we don't get it. There's nobody here. 
There must be an invisible, <laughs> there must be an invisible gardener that comes and takes care of the place. And 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 I said, wow, that's that's exactly my approach, see, because you know it's Mother Nature takes care of everything, and you don't see her exactly, do you? Right? You don't see Holy Spirit or God in nature. No, typically. you don't. Um, some it's, people do, but yeah. Well, you see the results. You just, you see yes. what it does. You know, you see the wind, you see the earth, you see the flower, you see people. We're alive. So basically, it's invisible to the exactly. eye. Exactly. The in the whole universe, pretty much is. 99% of it is invisible. But for Which me, I took... love because you should make friends with that, right? <laughs> friends with who? With the invisible. You should make friends with the invisible. Exactly right. Exactly right. And I, that's what I love about it because it, that's exactly what I do. People say, what did you, you do? Exactly. What did you do? What did you, I didn't see you do anything. I go, well, it's invisible. <laughs> you, you know, so when I go to a person's home and mainly I, I do a spraying, I've developed over the years how to, because, you know, um, Healing the, a person's a homeowner's property is very different than healing a farm. Okay, so it's kind of hard to have cattle running around your backyard, right? <laughs> you know yes, I mean? you don't have that that extra component. No, you know, so backyard. and I love just story that you just told on your workshop about one side of the house and the other side of the house. Okay, so you were listening. Oh, cool. I was listening. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, and to me, that's always been my. You know, because I always say, gee, why do bugs attack that tree or ants or whatever? And they're leaving that one alone. There has yes. to be a difference. There has to be some reason something's going on here, right? That makes the bugs. And I, I, I quickly key. Yeah, you know, I'm not probably one of the few people on the planet that says this in terms of uh, the, the results when you have, what happens when you don't get all your trace minerals? You know, trace minerals, we all need trace minerals, right? I take them every day in, form of <laughs> in my water. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Electrolytes. <laughs> exactly. We all need trace minerals, and the trees need trace minerals. And where do you think the trees and the animals and everything, they don't get, get it from going to the store and buy something. They get it from the no. food they eat. And the trees, what, yeah. what food are the trees eating, right? Who's giving food yeah. to the trees? I haven't seen anybody running around feeding the trees in the forest, right? The invisible gardener. Exactly right. So the, that's in the soil. The soil is the invisible gardener. Yes. See, right? You're so right. I and agree so with you. I've been giving a talk lately to a bunch of different scientists and farmers and stuff. And, and you know, there's we're talking about how trees talk, how trees communicate. You put something out there about a year ago on Facebook that I found so fascinating that trees actually communicate with each other. And exactly. my arborist told me that as well. Exactly can, right. Can you can you tell the audience about that? Because I think well, it's fascinating. Well, see, I saw the my experience with with trees and with the earth has been very different than most people in the sense that I am very really spacey out. I'm like Einstein, okay? I'm Einstein through the earth in that sense that I, I am really so far ahead of the crowd is ridiculous. So I learned You're a long intuitive, time. Intuitive, intuitive, and sensitive. Yeah. So I learned a long time ago that. I, I quickly keyed into mushroom. I said, what is it that, you know, the mycelium does? What is going on here? So I realized mushrooms come up out of, my, out of mycelium because that's a whole science on growing mushrooms. I'm not talking about just psilocybin mushrooms. I'm talking about edible nutritional mushrooms that are all over the planet, right? Yeah, so we, we ones that we can make mushroom soup out of. Right, so, but I also have dealt with uh, psilocybin mushrooms in my earlier in my youth because I, I was very very intuitive in turn about in terms of expanding my consciousness i realized a long ago long ago that mother nature put stuff here for us put things for us to help us with our consciousness that's not well, just you are a shaman aren't you a shaman <laughs> it's not just it's not just mushrooms but you name <laughs> you name it around the world there's always something you can go eat and it changes your consciousness yeah and what it does really it helps you directly communicate with that natural energy that natural spirit that comes from that plant so when you come, when you eat mushrooms, you eat psilocybin mushrooms, you're actually communicating with this ancient mycelium being. This is a, in my opinion, is one being. It's been around for millions of years before we were here. We evolved from this from this be, this being. Our stomach, right? We did, we decided one day to get up and move because you no know, trees are in the ground. Everything's in the ground. Right? The roots <laughs> are there. You're not going anywhere. But we decided we're gonna get up, put some of our soil with us, make that the stomach put the rest of it on the body and just move around, right? 
Yes, that's an interesting perspective. Yes. Right, so, we, so we have the very same microbes in our body that's in the soil, except they have evolved for our body. Mm -hmm. see, what, yeah. see what I mean? And, and the microbes yes. in the soil, what they do, amongst many other things, we, is they, they're like the internet of the soil. Okay? Mm -hmm. So anything, yeah. the, trees, the trees have evolved, the roots, roots look for the mycelium, the mycelium wraps around the roots, and they're plugged in. Right, they're plugged and in. Don't, and don't tree roots actually look for other tree roots and they entwine themselves and that's how they communicate and feed each other? They don't have to directly be in touch with each root system. Okay, to, they, 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 mm -hmm. the mycelium, they're connected to mycelium, mycelium is connected to them. They're all connected to the mycelium. So you have a tree over there two miles away and a tree over there, they're still going to communicate with, with each other. I see, because my arborist told me that, that if you have a cluster of trees, it's, it's less likely that a tree is going to fall than if you have an isolated old oak. Right, you know, right, because, you know, the roots, yeah. the roots tend to support each other yeah. in a lot of different ways, see, see what I mean? Yes. But you don't need, you don't need to, the, to touch, actually physically be in the same presence to communicate with each other, because trees communicate in many other different ways. There are visual signals that they send out, right? There's smells that they send out. You know, their heart, uh, uh, pheromones that they send out. And what's interesting, too, is that all living beings, insects, for example. So insects have learned to key into this to this because it gives them a better food source. See, right? So when this well, I know tree, you've talked about that as far as pest insects to a tree right. that will damage. Right. So, when, yeah. so when a pest attacks a tree, the pest can see that it's food for the, for the pest, that that tree is food for yeah. the pest. And... It doesn't attack the tree if it says, no, I can't eat that. See? Yeah. That's yeah, what it comes absolutely. down to. That's what it comes down to. And then I realized a long time, what is the difference? What is, when the tree's healthy and it's eating everything, why is it different kind of food for the pest than, the, than if the tree's not healthy? And it goes back down, goes down to trace minerals. It goes down to exotic trace minerals. And it goes down to carbohydrates. You know the difference between carbohydrates Simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates? I don't know the difference. <laughs> no. Well, it's, it's, it's simple. It's, although it's, I, complex actually, is better for you. Actually, it's simple because complex means oh. it's more, it's more, it's, it's more complex. It's a more complex carbohydrate than a simple one. A simple one is just basically protein. Push, right? Uh, or sugar, isn't it? Sugar. It's, sugar. It's, a, it's a form of sugar, right? That, yeah, not, that, not insulin. You know, not, right. Not, and so, and, but the, the, the bugs can only eat the simple carbohydrates. Okay. They can't digest complex carbohydrates. Well, it would be so, harder for them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they have evolved to look for that simple carbohydrates in plants, mm -hmm. whether it be in trees, uh, vegetables, fruit trees, whatever. And the difference is the ability of the soil to provide the trace minerals to the plants. If the soil doesn't have the ability to do that, the plant's not going to get all the trace minerals it needs. Wham, it becomes food for pests and diseases. Yeah. yeah See? Yeah. Yes. And that, and that, and that's so simple. It yeah, and that's simple. very different than let's get something we can spray. Because people called me up the other day, come over and spray the citrus. Sure. <laughs> Just sure. spray the citrus. I go, because uh, that's the logic, right? Yeah, just put a band aid on it. Yeah, give me something that I can spray on this thing and it'll be fine for a little while. And everybody tells you, well, he's just going to have to spray it for the rest of his life. You know, spray it every it's week, every month. It's the whole medical system that we have today, it's, Andy. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> right. it, I saw a TV the other day. The guy says, just eat eating all it." He didn't say junk food, but you know what he meant. Eat yeah. whatever you want eat, and come and take this. Just take these pills. Yeah, I, that's not right. And that's what doctors say. Eat all you want. Yeah. Take this pill. Make sure you're in my office once a month. <laughs> And don't don't, right. don't forget to pay the secretary on the way out. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Exactly. No, so exactly. There, there is a correlation between the two, you know, and, yeah. and the same thing with, with farming, you know, uh, the, the way the damage we do to the soil is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And, and uh, I was, you know, when I'm with, I, I work a lot with the Kiss the ground. They're really good people. Now I'm going to have some on as guests to talk about some more. Uh, but but right. they're, they're into re really a re, 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 uh, regenerative uh, farming, right? Regenerate, regenerating. Can, can, the you define, can you define, I hear that word all the time, regenerative in food or eggs or soil. Can you, can you extrapolate on that? 
Well, in, in the old in the old days, it used to be called sustainable. Sustainable it means the I same hear, thing. I hear they're, they're, they're interchangeable. Yeah, it means the same thing, except that regenerative is a much more clever way of saying it because it gives you the visual that it regenerates. Basically, I, so if you have a farmer who has a know. who has a regenerative regen is into regeneration, his mm -hmm. farm will automatically get better and better and better. It regenerates the soil, the soil gets healthier, everything gets healthier, the plants come back. You hardly have, you just have to know how to keep things going, right? And not do anything yes. wrong. It's a no-till, you don't roll the till. Every time you roll a till, you destroy the soil. It's the same thing with, with vegetables and plants. If you have a garden, you want a, a, a garden that gets better and better every year, that the soil gets healthier don't and healthier. Dig. Don't right? dig and, and the plants get healthier. That's what they mean by dense food. Mm, it, means, it means it's full of minerals. And, 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 right. and interesting too is that, see, the exotic ones are the ones we really, really need. And we don't get the exotics from normal, normal places. In like, the old what do you day, mean by exotics? Exotics would mean like, okay, you, have, you need 90 trace minerals. Ah. 90 trace minerals. So, you know, people don't think that they need mercury, cadmium, lead, arsenic. They need, we need those to gold, silver. Uh, there are more exotic ones that have crazy names. By exotic means you need them in such tiny, teeny, weeny more amounts. You take any more, they're toxic, but you need them anyway. Mm -hmm. They're needed in the soil and they're needed in the human body. There's no coincidence that everything the plants need is exactly what we need. But we can't eat, right? We can't eat a, 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 a rocks, right? We can't eat rock dust, <laughs> you know, right? So, so you try well, to eat something else. That has it. We can, go out and, we can go out and try and eat red soil. Sometimes my dog, I used to have a dog that ate my soil. When yeah, I was so it, they know there was something in there that he wants. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It helps his tummy out and everything. So that's mm -hmm. that's that's the whole key to what I'm trying to, to get across to people is that, no, you know, you, you, you need to be uh, proactive rather than reactive. Proactive means let's take care of the soil. Because everything that I talk about, the trees, the last... Last week, last month, it was natural fruit tree care. Okay, mm -hmm. they're all growing in the soil. And even if you know, because somebody asked me, what about container plants? Right? Well, container plants have a miniature little soil in there. You have to learn how to duplicate nature in that little container rather than have dead soil. Because that's what happens when you have dead soil. Your plants are growing. They're not very healthy. And they require you to give them the minerals in some other way. That's what foliar feeding is all about. That's why I learned one of the best ways to help plants and the property out is to foliar spray. Spray them with everything they need. So they absorb it, but it's still, you still need to take care of the, of the root system. No, look, if you were to take Systemic. intravenous yeah. feeding, right? You know how you, when they give you a doctor, they put this thing up and have a little tube hanging and they, they, you get this thing into, into your veins, right? Food. Right, right. Well, you can't, you can't, you won't survive long if you only did that and you don't eat. Yeah, to your, no, to your stomach. If your stomach dies, you die, right? Right. Right, right. It's the same thing with astronauts. They're learning, gee, we can't be eating this mush all the time because we're going to have major problems with our stomach. So they, one of the things they want to do in space is have a garden, right? So you can actually eat the produce and get, get it into your stomach. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you're in space, that's always been a big problem. You eat, you eat stuff, you squeeze. And the tiny little tubes of stuff, you squeeze stuff in there, you know, to, to eat. But it still does a trip on your stomach. Wow. You know, in the long run, it really shrinks down your stomach. You have problems when you come back to Earth. <laughs> I can't eat an apple. I can't eat, I can't eat an apple, right? And, and so that's and that's the key that I've been trying to get across to people uh, for way before I've ever met you, uh, since 1970. You know, mm -hmm. my, my first yeah. book, Heal the Earth in Your Spare Time, was basically that. Yeah. And yeah. I have 22 books out now. You, you have to be the genesis of this. We need to heal the soil. Thank you. I, there are other people who have been saying that. It's, for me, I've, you know, I, I've sort of, uh, I should, I apologize in the sense that I really haven't been on the message that much as I should be. I haven't, you know, really pushed it across. I, but I've, I've learned, I've woken up. I said, we can't, I can't just keep doing it this way. I have to start yelling people, fire, fire. <laughs> Excuse me, yeah. I, I, I'm like the guy in the corner with the sign saying the end is near, right? <laughs> right, now my, there you go. <laughs> now, now my sign says forget it, it's, it's done, <laughs> it, it works real. <clears throat> but I still have 
I never give up, you know, I don't, I will never give up. I will always, as long as I'm alive, as long as human beings, see human beings are the problem. So we need to change that. I don't, I'm not saying get rid of human beings. I saying we should have a little more consciousness in what we do. Basically. Consciousness and, and, and education and, and empathy for the earth. And we don't seem to do that. I've heard people say the earth is here for our enjoyment. Animals are here for us to do whatever, to do with as we wish. Yeah. I go, okay, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's wonderful. And I tell people, it's not the earth that's in trouble. It's human beings and all life. Because it's one thing if we take, if all the human beings died, right? Everybody continues living the birds, the animals, right? But no, we're taking everything down with us. Absolutely. And that's, and that's Absolutely. the problem. And that's a big problem, you see, because there's no guarantee that the earth says, oh, well, let's do that again. <laughs> right? Oh, that, that was fun. Let's do that again. No, it may just continue to be a barren planet or maybe some other kind of creature come, some alien will come and land. Oh, go, this is nice. <laughs> right? Where did everybody go? Right? It's and like, and what, 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 what struck me in your talk in the beginning was the climate change problem. Like, how do we fix? I mean, how do we fix that? I mean, that seems to be the headlight. Right. So the, the real problem is money. As long as we're geared into making money, we'll pollute the heck out of everything. But yeah. if, we, if, we, if we change our method of dealing with money, which is not, you know, it's not going to be an easy thing for us to, to be uh, earth-minded and not money-minded. But the kids, our children have to say, wait a minute, you know, we can do business and not pollute. We can have a green yeah. business, a green environment. The money could be good if it's done correctly. So, so we have yeah. to pass laws and say, no, you can't pollute the environment. No, you're going to have to clean this up. We have to get off of oil. We have to get out of nuclear power. Everything that we're doing is just pollute. Look, the Asian man, there's a name for the Asian man. I don't know what it is now, but basically it's plastic. It means plastic. There's plastic everywhere. Aliens were going to come here 10,000 years from now and do look around and go, look, there's a layer of plastic all over the earth. There's, you know, this is, this is, they cut into the soil, they'll find this strip of plastic everywhere. They're, that's the, the, the indicator that human beings have been there. How's that? That's horrible. I try and buy glass, you know, or save glass containers. I know, it is horrible. Storage. But I, I appreciate you coming on, Deborah. Uh, uh, you're, you know, I, I love you very much. You're a really you, I love you cool too. host. And I like I want you to be on some more with me because you I, know, I, be. I can talk to you all, all the time now. And I don't even have to tape the beginning of the show. I can at least just put the picture up there and you and I can talk about it while I'm doing it. You know, it's not a big That'd deal. That'd be great. That'd you know be I mean? great. Because I, I think I, I think it'd be more better for your audience if 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 I could ask some questions and you exactly could... right because I'm really tired of talking to myself. Basically, <laughs> I'm really, I, I I like talking to myself. I have this enormous ego. Hey Andy, oh hi Andy, how you doing? But no, 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 no. <laughs> I really need to have people come on here who ask questions to talk to get it out yeah. of me because I've been saying this over and over again. After a while, it's kind of boring. You know, it's like and, and people oh. can give you a different perspective if they ask a certain question. Right? Exactly right, like you like you did. And so, yeah. so from now on, I'll just have the pictures up there and we'll start right from the very beginning. I'll start talking, you interact with me. Okay. And then make, okay. and then also too, I don't mind people who are to call and interact with me during the show. That's what it's all yeah, about, it's interacting with people, right? Yeah. That's yes. what it's all about. Questions. You, yes. you get Tippy to call. I like to have him talk to me. <laughs> I thought that was great. He yelled in the background. I thought that was really cool. So let's see how much we, we got two minutes left, okay? So we can talk for two minutes. So anything you okay. want to tell me? Anything you want to talk about? Uh, I don't know. I could play you a little, have a have yourself a merry little Christmas on the piano. Oh, gee or I, or I uh, could wish you, wish you a good Thanksgiving. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? I mean, I, I hide. Turkey. I go into hiding. I don't, I don't, yeah. eat, yeah. I don't eat turkey. Uh, I try to adopt a turkey. Uh, I don't eat, uh, you know, I'll, I'll you eat the eat vegetables. Meat. Yeah, yeah, but so the problem with Thanksgiving is like people come over, here, have this steak, have this turkey, have this, I'm going, oh, what part, and so I have a friend, I told him, I'm plant-based, and he says, well, good, here's, here's a steak, I said, well, the steak is not, well, the cow's plant-based, I'm going, oh, okay, right? <laughs> that, that friend is a little out there. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, and, and he's, he says, he says, I'm only eating plant-based. I, I said, yeah, what is the steak? Well, the cow's plant-based. I go, oh, gee whiz. I know, I know, it's so weird. So I try to stay, and that's one of those things that it's kind of weird in the sense that, you know, 
we are really, you know, we kill millions and millions of turkeys. We kill millions and millions of uh, animals yeah. for eating. And so that has gotten a little bit out of hand, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we have to figure that one out. It's not easy. So anyway, this is the end of the show. Coming up is my cosmic spaceship. You don't have to be around for it, Deborah, but I hope you can watch it. It's really cool. It's my music and artwork. Have you seen it? I have, and I love Jess uh, Jessica Reisman's artwork too. Oh yeah, that, it's You're really new. cool. But you all, you all are very. Uh, run, you know, it runs in the family. <laughs> the rest of the family, the family is very artistic. Yeah. Okay, guys. So we're going to go now. I will be. I'll be back on uh, station two. Thank you, Deborah. Take care now. I'll be back with right, Cosmic Spaceship. Okay, okay, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye now. <laughs>